What's up guys? Welcome to a new playlist on my YouTube channel where we'll be getting into all things Poker GTO. We're going to jump right into an example today where I solve a hand that came up in my Twitch stream the other day and we're going to use simple post flop to do it. So here we go. Let's start by walking through the hand in question. So Hero is in the big blind with Ace Jack offsuit. Our villain is in C4, the hijack. He raises $3. We both have 100 big blind stacks. I think in the actual hand, he had a lot more chips, but all of the analysis we do today, I think is gonna be more interesting if we keep stacks to their standard 100 big blinds. So I call from the big blind versus this open, and our read on on the villain is that he, you can just assume he's an average rag. He's, he's not a recreational player. He's nothing out of the ordinary, just your typical rag. Now he, uh, we check it to him on this board. There's definitely no reason to bet. This board is going to be better for his range this dry. And we're in the big blind calling with a pretty wide range, of course. So we check it to him. He bets $3 just under half pot. And I elect to call. Now, what prompted this whole analysis is someone in the chat for the Twitch stream said uh, something like, wow, you called really wide. They were They were surprised that I called this flop so wide. And that I think is gonna be the gist of this analysis, this exercise. This is why I think it's interesting um, and could be useful to a lot of you guys because you might be folding this and I'm gonna to prove to you why it's it's a good idea to continue. I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. The, the gist is that if you're folding this hand then you are folding too wide on these dry boards and you're gonna allow your opponent to exploit you by just betting really wide. Even if he's not directly exploiting you, even if he doesn't know that you fold so wide on these flops, a lot of um, how typical regs play is a lot of styles is just going to naturally exploit you, even if they're not trying. So I call this flop. The turn is a two of spades. I check, he checks behind, and we are a luck box. We get there on the river. I bet, and he calls. Now, before I show you his hand, because I, I don't want you to get too biased about what he actually has, we're gonna go into the analysis before we see his hand. Because what'll t even when I do reviews with students or of my own hands, I, I try not to overemphasize their actual hand because of course we want to be playing against their range, all the hands they could possibly had, have, not the specific hand that they actually had. Now, in another video um, that I've that's a highlight here on YouTube, I did this analysis and I did the proof using Flopzilla. Now we're gonna go a little deeper and do a more complete analysis where we're considering our opponent's range and the tool we're going to use to do that as i alluded to at the, at the beginning is the gto solver simple post flop so now that you know the hand i'm going to grab all this information throw it into the tool and show you what results we get here we've got our simple post flop tool now today i'm not going to be going into great detail about how to use the tool i've done that in other places and we'll do that more in the future for this first episode in the in the new series the new playlist on poker gto I want to dive right into some of the interesting stuff that you can get from this tool. Now, I've put in the board and I have run the calculations and I have two ranges I've put in. I've put in a range for us in the big blind and that's what we're looking at. That's 19%. I've put in a range for our opponent here, opening in middle position, a reg range. And what does the tool tell us we should do? So. 100% of the time we should check. As I said earlier, the, this is a good board for our opponent. We don't have aces and kings and ace king, but he does. So on a dry board like this, and when we've got a, you know, a relatively wide but capped range, this is his board. We got to check all the time and the tool confirms that. Now when we check, our opponent is betting. This gives you a glimpse of what he's betting. The green stuff is uh, bet, the yellow is check. And now the, this is what we're after. What are we defending and how wide of a range, how wide of our range are we defending? So the tool suggests here that we defend, we call with a 38% range, we fold a 49% range, uh, percent of our range, and then we are raising with 13% of our range. So that's the breakdown of our range. And then here's specifically what we're doing. 
wherever we see the yellow is what we're calling with. Of course, we're calling with uh, these mid pairs. Where we see the reds is what we're folding. You see we're folding a lot of just the junk and the air. Um, we're folding some of these low suited aces. Of course, uh, the hands that we're not folding, the green slivers here are what we're raising. And we can see what those are. My hunch would be those are the nut flush draws. Yep, we look over here, ace two suited, played 39%. So played means we are not folding it. If if I click on the ace two suited, I can see down here, 39% is call. The other 60% uh, of the time we are raising that hand. And then how about the ace jack? This is the hand we had, right? So we're looking at all the ace jack offsuits and I am, the way this tool works is the played is doing the play that you're high, you've highlighted. So I've highlighted call. So played means call. So 76% of the time, we're calling with ace of spades, jack of clubs. I can click on it, see what we're doing the rest of the time. Okay, 24% of the time we're raising that. Now, what about if I go to the next one? Yeah, we're just always folding with no spade. And then how about something when I do have the jack of spades? In that case, we are calling with it 5% of the time. We are folding 90% of the time and raising 4% of the time. And then if I check one of these other jack of spades, we're calling 84% of the time, folding five and raising 10. Now that's interesting. This particular jack of spades, and it's because perhaps it's because we have the ace of hearts, there's some weird blocker thing going on. But with this particular jack of spades, ace of hearts, we are actually folding it a lot. But if we look at the other two jack of spades, we are calling this one 84% of the time and same here. These two are the same. So there's something funky going on with the ace of hearts. When we have specifically the ace of hearts, jack of spades, uh, it's okay to be folding it some of the time. So, you know, you're going to run in when you use these tools and do this analysis, you're going to run into some funky things that don't always make sense. And it's, you know, this may be difficult to implement. So my approach to doing it, and this is, I was saying this in the video, is just say, okay, I know that the tool tends to favor these backdoor spade and spade draws. And as the hand actually played out, like I, I hit my spade draw. So there is value in that. There is EV in that, which is why if you're not going to call, if calling with all of these would be too much, then the hands you choose are those ones with the ace of spades or the jack of spades. Now, the one other thing I want to point out um, in this video is is these baby pairs. So I'm sure you guys often wonder what you do with the baby pairs when you know over cards flop. And in the video itself, uh, when I was playing the hand, I said, you know, baby pairs, I feel like we have to call because I know we need to be calling wider than most people probably think on this paired board. Even the baby pairs are strong, but I kind of like the ace jacks, right? Because when we're behind with a baby pair, we only have a two outer. Whereas if we're behind with these ace jacks with back to flush draw, we could either run a runner our flush or sometimes we can spike an over pair. So the tool backs that up. The tool says, you can see how much red there is here. These big chunks of red means that we're folding these threes like a high percentage of the time. And then only very small percentage of the time are we gonna be calling or raising. So the last thing I'll say is with these these slivers, the reason that you kind of see they're called mixed strategies across the board is if you do the same thing with a hand all the time, then it's possible theoretically that someone else might figure out that you're doing that, right? For example, if you raise your flush draw all the time and you don't call with it, then when you call and the flush draw comes in, they, they know you never have a flush. So the, in a GTO world where everyone's playing perfectly and everyone knows what everyone else is doing, uh, that's why you get these mixed strategies. In practice, no, people aren't gonna figure out precisely what you're doing like that. So you don't have to implement them this cleanly, but you can you can get close and one, one other thing you can do, and we might do this in the future, is you can come in here and say, okay, I realize you say I should play a mixed strategy. What if I play instead X, where I fold all of these, I, I play all of my suited hands as a call, I fold the rest, and you can come in and program what you would actually do and lock that and then calculate the EV. And if you, if you do that and you see that you, you don't lose much EV here, like if you run it and see, oh, it's only 1.9, 1.8 instead of two, fine that's that's close enough right and that's an easier to implement strategy so it you can play with these to figure out well if i do something more realistic in terms of implementation is that really going to hurt me too much and usually it doesn't so that's a 
snapshot of how to use this uh, tool to uh, figure out what we should do with our range, how wide we should call. And you might note that here we're folding 49%, which is indeed a lot more than <laughs> when I did the estimate using Flopzilla. So that this just proves that Flopzilla, is a that's a rough estimate that didn't include ranges. And now that we include our opponent's range and how strong he is, that yeah, we it's okay to be folding a lot more.